Okay, series and sigma notation. Now, sigma notation, what it looks like is like this. And what it means is sum or a series, which means a sum of terms. Now, for example, it will look like this. That's a series, okay? It goes from the first to the nth term. Okay, first term to nth term. And this is how we actually represent with a sigma, sigma notation there. So it starts from 1 and goes up to nth term. And that's the, the formula there. So what does it all mean? It's this. So some of the terms are TR and starting at R equals 1 ending at r equals n okay now what happens if it goes forever okay there's nothing to it okay, goes up to certain terms here so we can write it that as uh, infinity so in the segment notation i will go from one to infinity okay so everything is the same, just the term is not clear. It's going forever. So this is called a infinite series. And the summary of the whole thing is like this. So that R can be any number we choose. Okay. Okay. So first question. Let's have a look at the first question, guys. Okay. Write out the series represented by part A that goes from 1 to 5 and the formula is R squared and the part B is start from 2 to 4 formula is 1 over 2 to the power of K minus 1 So let's start with part A guys So I'll push up a little bit Okay, so first one I'm going to go There's a 5 terms in there and starting is 1 and then that's your formula so I'm going to write 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared and stop there because there's only 5 terms there and if you calculate that you'll get 55 now B similar but it does start from 1, it starts from 2. So I'll go from 2 to the power of, what is it? Uh, start point is 2 minus 1 plus 2 to the power of 3 minus 1. 2 to the power of 4 minus 1. There's only three terms, one more. 2 to the power of 5 minus 1. So there's a four terms. Okay? So there's a five terms, so there's four terms. Now, if you do that, you get 2, 2 squared, 2 power of 3, 2 to the power of 4. And put that all that in your calculator. Let's see if we can get so. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 16. Okay, so it'll be 15 over 16. All right then, so that's all good. Now, the other way around, let's see how it goes with the other way around. Express each sum using sigma notation. Okay, so part A. Um, just have a look at this. First thing I noticed was the signs are alternating, isn't it? So that was a plus there, but we didn't have to write it and we didn't see it. But there is a plus, minus, plus, minus. Now when this happens, the value, your number, the formula, is there's a minus in it. Okay, minus it. And then the formula you want, the TR, 
you need to look at the last term. That actually gives away all the formula that you want. So it goes from 1 and it goes to 100. Okay, so I'm going to write a sigma notation right there. And it goes from R1 to 100. Now, formula is this. So I'm going to go minus 1 because the sign is alternating. And the 100 is the my R, last one, minus 1 there. And then times by the R squared. Okay, so that's, if you don't understand, just pause this and then think about it and write the um, sigma notation there. Now, second one, let's have a look. I'm going to write the sigma notation. Now, it starts with a 1, 2, 3, 4, that's okay. And that's my formula. And here we go, that's infinity. So I'm going to go straight away, r equals 1 and goes up to infinity. Okay, that's done. That's my formula. So I'm going to go the formula r, r plus 1. And that's it. It makes sense because the number next to it, it's always 1 more than previous one isn't it so that makes sense n brackets n minus n plus one all right so that's your uh, sigma notation excellent now we are getting into mathematical induction now okay proving show that that is true so let's start with let's start with a step one guys step one what was a step one always prove true for n equals 1. All right. Now, this is my left-hand side, and that's my right-hand side. So I'm going to go when n equals 1. My left-hand side equals, I'm going to put 1 in there. 3 minus 2 equals 1. My right-hand side, I'm going to put 1 in there. times 2 equals 1. So therefore, my left-hand side equals right-hand side. And make sure you write it down. When n equals 1 is true. Okay. Step 2. Step 2 is the easy one. Assume true for n equals k. Or you can do that. So, when n equals k, Whatever the n is, I'm just going to change it to k. Make this one 3r equals k, 3k minus 1. Okay, so that's my formula. Third, prove true for n equals k plus 1. So which is k plus 1? And of course, I have to change the whole thing as well. But because there's no n in there, we'll just leave it as it is. Now here, we need to change k plus 1 minus 1. Now I'm going to tie this one up a little. That becomes 3k plus 2. Okay, so now we are into the... Uh, actual actual proving part the algebraically proving part so i'm going to go with my left hand side which is the this part isn't it k plus one three r minus two now somehow we need to prove this into this using this part so i'm going to write my reminder that I need to use this. Okay. So what I'm going to do now here is I need to separate this. Because that's a K plus 1. So if I can just write uh, sigma notation with the up to K and plus one more term. Yeah. 
So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to go and put that in there. It just looks a little bit better for me. Okay. Okay, so that's, I'm just separating this. Plus one more term here. So that will be That's my one more term there. Okay, so think about this. That's a K plus one more term, the next term. Okay, the next term. So that is my, this one, isn't it? So I can rewrite this one, replace it, and do that. Okay, and then I'm going to put this one out like that. Okay, that looks like a very simple algebra. So if I do that, um, 3k squared over 2 minus k over 2 plus 3k plus, now 3 minus 2, it's just 1. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to continue. I just made it more room. And I'm going to make this whole thing out of 2. So it'll be 3k squared minus k plus 6k plus 2. Okay, And then I tidy it up a bit. I will get 3k squared plus 5k plus 2. Now luckily we can factorise this into... I've done quickly, but if you need to more time, just... Pause this and have a go at yourself. Okay, so that looks like what we want to prove, isn't it? From the top, oh yeah, there it is. You can remember that looks very much like, oops, can I see that? This. So I'm just going to rewrite this the way it need to be. So it looks a bit more convincing. which is the same as the right hand side. Okay, I'm going to just move this one away so I can finish that off. Okay, now that means P and K plus one term is true and but P when N equals one from the step one is also true. So therefore Step four, we can say P in terms of N is true by mathematical induction. Excellent. Okay, so we've done that. Now, next one, next proof. Let's have a look at next proof. Okay, show that is true. So let's have a look at that. First, prove true for n equals 1. So that's my left-hand side. That's my right-hand side. So when n equals 1, left-hand side equals log 1 plus 1 over 1 equals log just 2. And the right hand side is a log 1 plus 1, which is log 2. So the same. So therefore, left hand side equals right hand side. Therefore, P1 is true. Okay, so that's not bad. Now, second term, assume true for n equals k so i'm going to put in terms of k here now it's not too bad k plus one okay so that wasn't too bad now third step three prove true for n equals k plus one so K plus 1, K plus 1, log R plus 1, R equals log, now K plus
plus one plus one. I'm just going to write k plus two. Okay, so that's what I'm going to have to prove. That's not too bad. So let's have a look at my left hand side, which is all this. And remember, we have to use step two to prove this step. So I'm just going to write here that 2k log r plus 1 equals log k plus 1. So again, I'm just going to separate this into two. So I'm going to go first one in terms of k, which is not that hard. Now, the extra step that we have to put in, it would be log k plus 1 plus 1 over k plus 1. So whatever the r, just replace with a k plus 1 because it's the next term, yeah? Okay, so we've done that. So I've tied it up a little bit. Now I'm going to replace these with this one. So... And I'm going to re rewrite this, k plus 1 on top, k plus 2. Now, do you remember with a log, when it's a plus, you times together. So, I'll go k plus 1 times like that. Okay, and then I can cancel this. Well, I can see already it's happening. Can you see? We are getting into our proof here. So that equals log k plus 2, which is same as the right-hand side, isn't it? Yeah, that's what we wanted to prove. I just want to show you at the top. That's what we wanted. And that's what we got in the bottom. Now, let's tie this line up. Therefore... P k plus one is true, but p when n equals one is also true, also true. So step four, therefore p in terms of n is true by mathematical induction. How? Easy was that. Excellent. Well done, people.